In this video, I want to show you how we can sum to infinity. So what that means is I'm going to show how we can add an infinite number of bits together, an infinite number of terms together, and come up with a finite value. Now, this doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound like it should work. But in actual fact, it does. And it is a big part of moving forward with your mathematics, opening your brain up to these concepts of infinity. So what I mean by this is that you could have a series that looked something like this. You could have 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus etc 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 and we go on forever and there are an infinite number of terms and each time I get from one term to the next I'm halving it each time okay and then I add all of them together and I will come up with a finite value now to explain how this works it's best to see it pictorially so if I draw a box okay let's actually draw two boxes Okay, and both of these boxes uh, have the same area. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to progressively add up the area. So one represents one of these boxes. So that is one. And then I'm going to add on a half. So I'm going to split this box down the middle. And I'm going to add that half on. Now I'm going to add on a quarter. So a quarter would be splitting this one in half and adding that on. Okay? And then I'm going to add on an eighth. So I'd have to split that bit in half and add that bit on. And then I'm going to add on a sixteenth. So I'm going to halve that bit and add that on. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to a 1 over 32. So I'm going to add that bit on. Then I'm going to keep going. That's a 1 over 64. And then that's a 1 over 128. And then that's a 1 over 256. And then I'd have a 1 over 512. And then I'd have a 1 over 1024 and 1, 000, uh, 2048 and so on and so on and so forth. And I keep on adding on smaller and smaller and smaller bits until what you can see in total is that all of these things must add up to 2. Because that is one square, that was one box, and that was the other box. And I'm getting closer and closer and closer to completely colouring in the second box. And so the infinite sum is equal to 2. So I can add up an infinite number of things and get a finite number, okay, as we can see here. So how does this work for us? How could we work it out for any old uh, sum? Well, there are some restrictions to start off with. The big restriction is your common ratio, the number you're multiplying by each time you get to each term. Because clearly, if I started off with 1 and I was actually timesing by 2 each time, then this clearly, when I add up all of these, um, they don't converge upon a singular number. Okay? The, I keep on adding on larger and larger and larger numbers. So there will be no sum to infinity for this. And it's all down to that common ratio, what I'm multiplying by. In order for this to work, the value of r must be between minus 1 and 1. If it is 1, then the, um, the sequence stays static. Okay, So it remains exactly the same for each term. It's a constant sequence. If r is greater than 1, then the numbers, the gaps between the numbers, increase 
each time. And so the data points get further and further apart each time you go along in the series. And so adding them all together, uh, you can't really do. It would just be infinity. So that is our restriction. So how do we get a formula for the sum to infinity? Well, it makes sense that we would work with one of these formulas for Sn. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with... I'm, I'm going to do something really, really bad here mathematically. Uh, I am going to take it back, so don't worry. Okay. I've actually substituted n for infinity here. What's going to happen is that this bit here, this r to the power of infinity, is going to disappear. And I'm going to show you how that disappears. Okay. So, what we're going to have is if I start with this, then what I want to say is that as n tends to infinity, okay, and r is between minus 1 and 1, this uh, tends to a, well, a, sorry, a t times 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r. The reason being is that r to the n will tend to 0 because the r to the n will get smaller and smaller and smaller because r is between minus 1 and 1. Uh, as you can see, I mean, what I've got here is if you started at a half and you were, divide, and you were timesing by a half each time, then the r that you get uh, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's like a half squared, a half cubed, a half to the 4, a half to the 8, a half to the 50, half to the 100. These fractions that I get are getting smaller and smaller and smaller until they are effectively negligible, until they are effectively zero. And so we can simplify this because a that's just a times 1. As I said, I was going to scrub it off the board. Okay, and I'm just going to be left with A. And that is the sum to infinity. This simple looking formula actually adds together an infinite number of terms. Okay, an infinite number of terms in a geometric series and pops out a value. And it is a very important and useful formula to have um, as part of our toolkit and it is also given to us in the formula booklet.